Well, welcome to this meeting of uh, Bass Coast Council. And for those that are in the room, I welcome them uh, for, and thank them for their participation. And I welcome those that uh, may be viewing us online. For live streaming, as the meeting chair, I give my consent for this open council meeting to be streamed live, recorded and published online in accordance with council's live streaming policy and governance rules. To members of the public joining us the gallery today, by attending this public meeting of the council, you are consenting to your image, voice and comments being recorded and published. The chair or CEO have the discretion and authority at any time to direct the termination or interruption of live streaming. Such direction will only be given in exceptional circumstances where deemed relevant. Circumstances may include instances where the content of debate is considered misleading, defamatory or potentially inappropriate to be published. Attendees are advised that they may be subject to legal action if their actions result in inappropriate or unacceptable behaviour or comments. Thank you for that. Virtual meeting statements, part 12 brackets, COVID-19 temporary measures of the Local Government Act 2020 allows council meeting attendance by electronic means. Councillors are deemed as being in attendance if they can hear proceedings, they can see other members in attendance and can be seen by other members and they can be heard to speak. Now, we don't have any councillors coming in live streaming at this point in time, but it's not to say that couldn't happen through the meeting, so we'll read, we've read that out. Mind everyone to turn off their phones or put them onto silent mode, please, at, at this point of the meeting. Basco Shire Council acknowledges the Bunurong as traditional owners and custodians of the lands and waters and pays respect to their elders past, present and emerging, for they hold the memories, the traditions, the culture and law. Basco Shire Council celebrates the opportunity to embrace and empower the Aboriginal and or Torres Strait Island communities in their diversity. Basco Shire Council will create opportunities for future recognition and respectful partnerships that will honour the traditional owners and custodians and Aboriginal and or Torres Strait Islander people. Now I call on Councillor Bauer to read the Councillor's statement. Thank you, Mr Mayor. All members of this Council pledge to the Basque Coast Shire community to consider every item listed on this, on this agenda based on the individual merits of each item without bias or prejudice by maintaining an open mind and disregarding Councillor's personal interests so as to avoid any conflict with our public duty. Any councillor having a conflict of interest in an item will make a proper prior disclosure to the meeting and will not participate in the debate or vote on the issue. Thank you, Councillor Bauer. Uh, we have apologies. Uh, we have apologies from Councillor Les Lark and Councillor Claire Lesserve. Declarations of interest, I have four declarations of interest in relation to H11, Community Grants 2022 Round 1 funding recommendations. They are Councillor Michael Whelan, Councillor Bruce Kent, Councillor Ron Bauer and Councillor Brett Vasari. So this brings us to confirmation of the minutes. Council meeting held on the 20th of April 2022, uh, that the minutes of the council meeting held on the 20th of April 2022 to be confirmed, I request a councillor to move and a councillor to second that resolution. Councillor Bauer, Councillor Lang, those in favour? Against, carried. Public question time brings us to public question time, which the first question, if, if I had the right page open, would be a question from Robert Stewart, Cape Patterson Expansion. Why is Council considering further development and subdivision at Cape Patterson when the existing new development brackets the Cape is far from, from complete and a new land release is yet to be sold? It appears excessively hasty to be approving further development at Cape Patterson when the current development still has years until its completion. Call on the CEO for a response. Through the Mayor, Council must accept any application to rezone land that is made in accordance with the provisions of the Planning and Environment Act. A final decision on further residential development in Cape Patterson is subject to the finalisation of the Bass Coast Statement of Planning Policy by the State Government through the Distinctive Area Landscapes Plan. Council submission to the DEL is being considered at this Council meeting. The second question is from John Trite, Climate Change and Emergency Disasters. Considering that the Bass Coast 
Shire Council recognises climate change as a serious risk to the safety and prosperity of Bass Coast and Phillip Island constituents, is there an emergency disaster plan for a major earthquake, for example, in the case the Phillip Island Bridge collapses? Through the Mayor, planning for emergencies is an essential part of Council's role. One of the strategic outcomes of the Council plan is to plan and prepare for emergency responses in the region. The Basco Shire Council Emergency Management Plan, MEMP, sets out Council's legislative responsibilities as outlined in the Emergency Management Act 2013. When emergencies occur, Basco Shire Council works alongside the police and other service providers to ensure a planned and cohesive response to all events. Question three is also from John Trite and the cancellation of Grantful Waste Station. Was there a financial cost incurred by the Basco Shire to Ace Industry for the cancellation of the Grantful Waste Station and TIP? Through the Mayor, Council and Ace agreed that their interests are best served through an early end to their arrangements. Operation of the Grantville Landfill and Transfer Station transferred seamlessly to Council in April 2022, and customers will continue to receive a consistent level of service that respects the Bass Coast environment. Question four is from Graham Jolly, Bass Coast Ratepayers and Residents Association, CEO Administration. Refusing to identify themselves anonymous members of the CEO administration have and are now targeting BCRRA and selected community members and are continually intercepting, censoring and preventing email communications from being delivered to its intended delivery address, the councillors. Does the CEO approve and condone this unacceptable practice? Through the Mayor. A very small number of customers have their correspondence directed to a generic email address that is checked on a regular basis and actioned where required. This practice is in accordance with the organisation's unreasonable content. For the benefit of our uh, streaming audience, we lost uh, sound there at one stage, so I'm about to reread question four, which was from Graham Jolly, about CEO administration. Refusing to identify themselves, anonymous members of the CEO administration have and are now targeting BCRRA and selected community members. 
and are continually intercepting, censoring and preventing email communications from being delivered to its intended delivery address, that is the councillors. Does the CEO approve and condone this unacceptable practice? Through the Mayor. A very small number of customers have their correspondence directed to a generic email address that is checked on a regular basis and actioned where required. This practice is in accordance with the organisation's unreasonable conduct by customers policy. This allows officers to triage emails and provide a timely and appropriate response. The vast majority of Victorian councils have unreasonable conduct by customer policies in place that mirror Bass Coasts. They are designed to protect the health and safety of our people, including councillors, as well as efficiently manage our services whilst upholding the rights of our community to communicate with council. Some examples of the need for this practice include excessive numbers of emails and correspondence. In some cases, more than 400 emails per annum from one individual. Court orders that prohibit all forms of contact with our people. Threats to family members of our people. Communications that are highly offensive and derogatory and communications that are designed to or may cause psychological harm. There is a long-standing invitation from the, for the current president of the BCRRA to meet with council officers to discuss his concerns with council. However, this invitation has yet to be taken up. Question five is from Melissa Dagg, quarter financial report. One, the Chief, officer, Chief Executive Officer has authorised a reporting format change to its PDF in a details to the third quarter financial report. The use of JPEG photo information for the Capital Works spreadsheets has stopped our councillors and ratepayers from using an Excel spreadsheet format. Please explain. Second part of that, the CEO has increased the number of Capital Works projects to 185 in the third quarter financial report. Would Council explain when unbudgeted grants are to be for Project Shovel Ready, when the grant is provided by the Commonwealth and State Government, why the increase in projects? Through the Mayor. The report has been prepared in the most efficient way possible to convey information to the community. Officers will be in contact to clarify your question and provide the information you are seeking. Question six, Stacey Dagg, Capital Works Expenditure. Would Council please explain in detail the reason why YTD actual expenditure for Capital Works is $21,974, well, it doesn't make sense, but 807 cents, or is that $21,974,807, which does make sense, for nine months of the year, 2021 to 2022, when $61 million 206,892 is the overall allocated funding, leaving 39,232,085 still to expense in the last three months. Through the Mayor. Project delivery throughout a budget year is non linear, and actual expenditure reflects this, noting many projects are phased for delivery over multiple years. Uh, question seven, Graham Jolly, Draft Local Law Ratepayers Review. Council has a community engagement policy, communications and engagement strategy. Local laws are under review, agenda H10 and attachments. 33,000 ratepayers in the Shire, half living outside the Shire. How does Council expect all ratepayers to respond to the review in four days after the draft is released? Through the Mayor. The closing date for review of the draft local law is the 16th of June, 2022, not 22 May 2022. Opportunities for the community to engage in the review, including a number of face-to-face pop-up sessions and through our online platform, Engage Bass Coast. Question eight is from Robert Hosking, planning application 210094. The land is proximate to the Western Port Ramsar wetlands. The application provides minimal information in respects to this important asset. How can Council guarantee this proposal will not result in any impacts to the Ramsar wetland and ecosystems it supports? The land is zoned farming and outside the township boundaries. 
How can this land use be consistent with the objectives of the Farming Zoning Council's broader strategic plans? Through the Mayor, councillors will consider and debate all aspects and implications of this issue as part of Council's agenda. That brings us to uh, petitions, joint letters, deputations and correspondence, of which there are none. Notices, motion, of which there are none. Petitions. Mr. Mayor, you've got a petition? Yeah. Okay, we do have a petition, and uh, so I need a mover and mover. We've got Councillor Holstead, Councillor Kent for the acceptance of that, and it lies on the table. Those in favour? Against, that's carried. Glitch in the uh, run sheet here. Notices of motion, there are none. The Mayor and Council reports. The Mayor's report has been prepared and will appear in the minutes and has become practice for the time being. We're also expecting that will be the case with Council reports. Um, I just wanted to make a, a short acknowledgement and uh, it's to do with the family violence on Bass Coast. And on behalf of Bass Coast Shire Council, I would like to acknowledge Samantha Fraser, whose life was tragically taken through an act of family violence, was recently the subject of a, of a court case which has been ruled upon. We acknowledge all women and people who are victims of family violence in our shire. We acknowledge the effect that family violence has on individuals, families, friends and our community. All Victorian councils have a legislative responsibility to protect, improve and promote public health and wellbeing. Bass Coast takes this responsibility seriously and has a long and proud history of leading our community in the prevention of family violence and supporting gender equality. Bass Coast family violence incidents in 2020, 2021 was up 30% from the previous year, almost double the comparable Victorian statistic. This is a devastating statistic. Our local police force are extremely vigilant and thorough with their action and reporting of family violence inc incidents. We do not want to see a repeat of the tragedy that occurred with Sam Fraser. Bass Coast Shire Council continue to undertake the work with our employees, our partners and our community. Our Healthy Communities Plan has a strong and holistic focus on ensuring that our community is respectable and free from family violence. Our council seeks to provide support and leadership to our partners and community to explore ways that they can prevent family violence and support gender equality within their workplace community groups and households. So that brings us to reports requiring council decision. And the first one is H1 2021-2022 quarterly performance report for January to March 2022. And I call on Mr. Matt to introduce the report. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. This report provides council and the community with an update on the third quarter performance for our annual action plan, capital works program and financial results and includes forecasts for the full year. Strong progress on the annual action plan is being made with six actions complete, 17 on track and two needing attention. Council's forecast net result is favorable to budget by 4 million with a 12.5 million surplus forecast for the year in June 22, and due to the recognition of capital grants. Once the impacts of grants and contributions are removed, Council adjusts the underlying result was forecast to reflect the 1.6 million deficit. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Mr. Mack. Can I have a councillor to move and a councillor to second the uh, motion as per the agenda? That's Councillor Lang, Councillor Brooks. Councillor Lang. Oh, apologies, my first in person council meeting. <laughs> um, I'm pleased to report some really um, fantastic highlights to the community in this quarterly report. Significant process. progress has been made on the annual action plan with 23 of the projects completed or on track for completion this financial year out of 25 of those. There are two that require attention and these are the original strategic partnership for the Cape to Cape Coastal Hazard Assessment and the Guy Road Shared Pathway. And in the past quarter, the Cape Patterson Seawall Renewal Project was completed to protect it from erosion. And this upgrade includes some stairs for pedestrians to access the beach more safely instead of walking down the ramp. Um, we continue to be in the low risk category for Victorian Auditor General's office um, ability to 
to repay existing debts. So um, that's called the working capital ratio. And um, this is, again, another sort of record-breaking reporting period for council in the sense that um, we've almost doubled the expenditure ever achieved by council in a previous year. It's so great that significant process is being made on multi-year projects that make up a further 32% of the program by funding, including intergenerational projects like the Cows Cultural and Community Centre, where construction is well underway. And we've also had some um, works commence and go well underway in, as part of the One Baggy Activity Centre plan. So um, I recommend this report to the Chamber. Thank you, Councillor Lang. Councillor Roof. Nothing further to add. Any other councillor wish to speak to the motion? If not, uh, Councillor Lang, do you have anything further to say in response to yourself? <laughs> <laughs> no, nothing further to add, thank you. Okay, those in favour? That's carried. Which brings us to H2, which is planning application 2000053-76 Biminara Road, Armour's Haven. Mr. Sturton, to introduce the report, please. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. The purpose of this report is to present planning application 200053, which seeks to subdivide the subject land into two lots and for the removal of native vegetation at 60 to 76 Biminaria Road, Harms Haven. The land is owned township zone, includes a bushfire management overlay and design development overlay. The application is advertised and received 21 objections and one submission of support. A further objection was received after the report was authored. The application has been considered and assessed against the past case planning scheme. It is recommended the council resolve for a future planning permit as per the conditions outlined in the report. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Mr. Sturton. Could I have a councillor to move and a councillor to second the motion as per the agenda, please? Councillor Lang and Councillor Kent. Councillor Lang. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I don't have much more to add. Um, uh, this block has a long history of protection stretching back to the 1980s when a larger subdivision proposal was knocked back by the then Planning Appeals Board. Even back then, the land was recognised for its significant contribution to the vegetation and biodiversity. This report and recommendations um, definitely highlight these um, biodiversity concerns and the impact that this um, development would have, in particular in Harmers Haven. Um, and we received 21 objections to um, a, an application in Palmer's is still is, is significant. Um, and I also understand that the Palmer's Haven Residents and Ratepayers Group undertook their own independent um, process of consultation, which included the consultants, I mean, the applicants, and um, out of the 42 people who attended that, um, about two-thirds of them um, were not supportive of the application. So I'm very satisfied that council officers have undergone an extensive review and um, the, uh, support the recommendation that's made in this report. Thank you, Councillor Lane. Councillor Kent. Thank you, Mayor. Um, first off, uh, I can feel for the owners of this property, but my concerns are in regards to our coast and the pressure that's being put upon that. And anybody who walks down there would have to agree that this part of uh, our bushland just shouldn't be touched. It's, it's as simple as that. And, that. and it's unfortunate. And a lot of the land can't be built on because it is a swamp area. So it's, for me, it's not the objections. It is what the coast is going under at the moment. We haven't come up with a solution. Why put more pressure on it? Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Kent. Any other councillor wish to speak to the motion? Anything to add, Councillor Lane? Put to a vote, Mr. Mayor. To a vote. Those in favour of the recommendation? That's carried. Which brings us to H3, planning application 2100924, Churchill Road, New Haven. I ask Mr. Sturton to introduce the report, please. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. The purpose of this report is to present planning application 210094, which seeks to develop the subject land for a museum and restaurant for removal of native vegetation, construction and display of business identification signage, and the creation of vehicle access to a transport zone road. The proposed use is for a National Vietnam Veterans Museum. 
The land is owned farming zone and transport zone, and no one buys supply of this land. The application was advertised and received 10 objections and one submission of support. In addition, this application will be before council due to the development exceeding the $3 million threshold. The application has been considered and assessed against the best case plans, but has also been referred to the relevant authorities. It is recommended that the council resolve to issue a notice of decision to grant the plan agreement as per the conditions outlined in the document. Thank you, Mr. Thank you, Mr. Sturton. Can I have a councillor move and a councillor to second the motion as per the agenda? Councillor Holstead, Councillor Kent. Councillor Holstead. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, I think this is a really exciting time for Bass Coast and especially for the veterans of um, the Vietnam Veterans Museum. Obviously, they've lit, they've been uh, chugging along in an old, beaten up. I guess, building for a number of years now. And uh, from the plans that I've seen of what they're proposing, um, it's going to be a state-of-the-art building and national building for Vietnam vets. They don't have um, a national museum. And I think that um, for us to be the home of that is a real, um, I guess, a pleasure to have them here and to have them... Um, you know, representing not just the Vietnam vets, but all veterans. Um, I think it's an absolute honour for Bass Coast to be having them here and um, for them to be building this new building. It's very exciting stuff. So good on them and uh, I look forward to them moving forward. I know there's been some concerns with neighbours and it is a big building. It is a big thing to... Um, to have over your fence, but uh, I think that they've addressed all of the issues that need to be addressed, and uh, yeah, I look forward to it moving forward. Thank you, Councillor Holstead. Councillor Kent. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I note that you didn't seem surprised when both Councillor Halstead and myself <laughs> put our hands up for a rush. Uh, <laughs> I, I agree wholeheartedly with what Councillor Halstead has said. Uh, I've just returned from a holiday up north, which was fantastic, but I was on a bus trip up there and I was uh, just sitting in front of a, a gentleman and the Vietnam War came up and he was uh, he had attended the war and he was talking to another uh, gentleman and he said, look, we just weren't treated properly and both gentlemen were talking about how they were the... Oh, I don't mind saying, he said, we, we were called baby killers and things like that. And I felt very sorry for him, but it was with pride I told him what we're doing here down at Phillip Island, and it just brought a smile to his face. So um, for him, I'm, I'm supporting this. Simple as that, and for all those other people. Thank you, Councillor Ken. Councillor Tassari. I fully agree with uh, what Councillor Holstead and Councillor Kent have previously said. Um, the Vietnam vets that we have across the road is uh, an amazing place to go and 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 realise what our people, what, what our brothers and sisters have been through and, and what they've done for, for, for us to be able to live the life that, that we do and, and, and the fact that they've put their life at risk, it's really quite amazing. I'm a massive supporter of it. I think this uh, building will be amazing. Um, the, the effort, the time and the, the, the pride that these guys have put into getting this right um, I, I think I, I'm nothing but 100% supportive of it. So I, I look forward to not only approving this today, but also seeing the building built. Um, I can't wait for that. So fully supportive, Mr Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Desari. Any other council, Councillor Bauer? Yeah, thank you, Mr Mayor. I'd just like to add in that uh, this is an internationally significant building because the Vietnam vets on Phillip Island is the only Vietnam War Museum in the world in the world. The Americans don't even have anything like this. And congratulations that we've got this and to the early pioneers that set this up. And I think this was a wonderful progress and that is my full support. Thank you, Councillor Bauer and uh, Councillor Rooks. Yeah, I just want, I'm supportive of this application and I wanted to um, commend them on the, the design of the building. Um, it's away from the road. Um, it's got an angled roof, which is at the low side from the road and goes up from there. Uh, they're vegetating the roof, which is fantastic. and it's a quite an environmentally sustainable design. They've got a lot of trouble with the landscaping as well um, in the area, and they're going to create some wetlands and walking tracks. I do have one concern. They're also um, putting up some large mounds um, to and vegetate those mounds to hide the building. Um, as much as that concept is, is a good idea in, in itself, they're, 
they're moving some of the dirt from an area they're going to be revegetating. And that seems strange to me, that you would go and dig up some dirt uh, where the best soil is and then try to, to build that mound and revegetate in that same area. Um, earthworks, I'm advised by council staff, are outside the control in the farming zone, so we can't dictate how they're going to do their work. I just hope they do look after the soil when they do these mounds. Thank you, Councillor Rooks. Any other councillor wish to speak? If not, Councillor Holstead. Thank you, Mr Mayor. I just congratulate the board in going through the process and getting to this stage. It is a long process to go through and, um, you know, Vietnam vets uh, are run by volunteers. And I would also um, call on the state and federal government to um, contribute to the building. I know that the Vietnam vets are applying for funds and I would hope that the state and federal government would look at that favourably. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Holstead. Uh, those in favour? That's carried. Brings us to H4, planning application 21041958 San Remo Road. San Remo, Mr Sturton, to introduce the report, please. Thank you, Mr Mayor. The purpose of this report is to present funding application 210419, which seeks to subdivide the subject land into two lots and construct two subsequent direct dwellings at 58 San Remo Parade, San Remo. The land is zoned general residential zone and is subject to a design and development overlay. The application is advertised and received three objections. This application is before council as, as it has been called in by councillor. The application has been considered and assessed against the Bass Coast Planning Stand. It is recommended the council resolve to issue a notice of decision to grant the planning permit as per the conditions outlined. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Mr. Sturt. Can I have a councillor to move to Councillor Council Holstead? Councillor to second, Councillor Kent. Uh, councillor Holstead. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I think the report says it all, really. Um, it's, it's a great planning application. I can't see any issues with it. So I um, support it and put it to council. Councillor Kent. Thank you, Mayor. I, I note that it is a thousand square metre block of land that's being divided, and uh, I fully support uh, that um, project. I also notice that the heights of the, the houses are, I think, around about the seven metre. There's no objection whatsoever. I think what, if we're going to put town boundaries down in, in concrete, that we've got to look more and more at these situations possibly, but in the right conditions. And I think dividing a thousand square metre block into two in these circumstances is the right thing to do. The councillor, can any other councillor wish to speak to the motion? If not, Councillor Holstead, put it to the vote. Those in favour? That's carried. Which brings us to H5, planning application 21047241, Teddy Bear Lane Towers. Mr Sturton, to introduce the report, please. Thank you, Mr Mayor. The purpose of this report is to present planning application 210472, which seeks to remove four trees at 41 Teddy Bear Lane Towers. The land is a general residential zone and subject to a vegetation protection overlay. The application is advertised and received seven objections. The application has been considered and assessed against the base based planning scheme. It is recommended that the council resolve to issue a notice of decision to grant a payment for the past and conditions outlined in the report, which approves the removal of two trees. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Mr. Sturton. Can I have a councillor to move the motion? Councillor Rooks. And Councillor Ken. Councillor Rooks. Thanks, uh, Mayor Willen. Yes, um, the proposal was to, through this application, was to remove four trees. Um, in addition to this, people should be aware, made aware that there was a, um, a plan, uh, requirement to remove a further tree, which was uh, needed to be removed under emergency works exemption. So that was also part of this um, permit. Uh, but that proved it was a high risk tree, so it had to come out. If the objectors, and thank you for those people that objected, who made us aware of this application. Uh, and they were very keen to keep trees 20 and 22 as per the map in there. And that has been agreed to now by the applicant. So that's fantastic. Um, and the council supported that. Uh, it should also be noted that um, recently in the last two years that the, this council has increased its arborist reports by about 30%. And also they've increased the requirements for landscape plans by about 56%. And that's a good thing. It means that we're asking more of our landholders and respecting the vegetation. That's all. Thank you, Councillor Rooks. Councillor Kent. 
Yes, thank you, Mayor. I uh, fully agree with the comment from Councillor Rooks. If people have a look at this block of land, the nominated trees are very close to the current uh, uh, building there. And I would suggest that even the untrained person would see that a couple of these trees would be a danger to that building and its occupants. I'm very much in favour of our, um, our trees in our area, probably having planted 200 plus plants on my own property in the last couple of years. So I don't like cutting down trees, but in regards to the book, I can see the reasoning behind it. Thank you, Councillor. Can any other councillor wish to speak to the Councillor Bauer? Yes, may I ask a point of clarification for Mrs Sturton, please? Yes, certainly. Uh, Mrs Sturton, can you clarify that to me the, the application of this application is different to the permit required for Anderson Street Car Park? Uh, three years ago, that is correct. Um, a different planning context and otherwise required the, this particular um, Thank you. Uh, if I may continue, Mr. Mayor, fellow councillors, members of the public in the gallery and online. As I read this planning application, I shook my head. Clearly, what's good for the goose is not good for the gander. We are exercising botanical apartheid. As we've just heard from Mr. Sturton, this application is different subject to a planning application and the average report by Urban Forestry Victoria Proprietary Limited is recommending the retention of the Southern Mahogany Gum Trees, number 17, 18, 20 and 22, rating them of high significance. I have no problem with that at all. Yet the three majestic Southern Mahogany Gums in Anderson Street Car Park are condemned because of a technical distinction. In these times of climate emergency, we need every significant tree we've got. Common sense should be exercised. Our vegetation policy requires consistency. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Bauer. Any other councillor wish to speak to this motion? If not, Councillor Rooks, do you wish to reply? No, I'm pretty sure. Those, those in favour? Against? Carried. Um, Makes us right six submission to the draft Bass Coast Statement of Planning Policy. Now I call on Mr. Sturton to introduce the report, please. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. The purpose of this report is to present Council's submission to the draft Statement of Planning Policy of the Distinctive Areas and Landscapes Project, being led by the Department of Environment, Land, Water and Planning. The entirety of Bass Coast was declared a distinctive area and landscape in October of 2019. Since that time, Delta produced a draft Statement of Planning Policy which was released for phase three community engagement in March 2022. The draft SPP places a priority on the central landscape and provides a 50 year vision to the way the Bass Coast could be developed. Council's submission to the draft SPP is presented as a factor of one the meeting agenda. Council's submission applauds the intention of the SPP yet seeks further work and clarification in the following policy areas. Climate change mitigation and adaption with specific requests to further the achievement of greenhouse gas reduction and striving for zero net emissions. Landscape clauses, further specific control that protect regional significant landscapes. Environment and biodiversity, further the protection of native vegetation cover. Sustainable economic development, placing priority for the natural environment for the protection of land that has been identified as an area of interest for extractive resources. And finally, settlements, conduct further work before protecting settlement boundaries of Cows and Silverleaves, San Remo, Granville, Inverloch and Cape Patterson to more fully understand land use requirements and employment and residential land across the entire Shire, with particular reference to native character. It is recommended that Council endorse its submission to the draft SPP, provide the submission to DEL and write to the Minister of Planning to request the meeting and the incorporation of its feedback into the final statement of planning policy. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Mr. Sturt. We have a councillor to move and a councillor to second the report. That's Councillor Lang, Councillor Holstead. Go ahead, Councillor Lang. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I noticed that there's a lot of people in the audience today from Kate Patterson. Hello, um, fellow neighbours. Um, when I ran for council, one of the issues I campaigned on was to preserve the village character and the natural space of Kate Patterson. And what I've heard by and large, um, and this is not just since the Distinctive Area Landscape Declaration, what I've heard by and large is that Cape Patterson is to, should be protected from overdevelopment. 
The current recommendation in the draft distinctive area landscape, the DAL, um, to double the size of Cape Patterson does not go far enough to protect its character, environment or the landscapes that the DAL is supposed to be there to protect. The evidence supporting the, this expansion is slim. That is why Council is pushing for further work to consider a reduction to the Cape Patterson boundary north of Seawood Drive. We are not supporting the boundary as it stands, but we do need a better picture of how housing supply and housing and neighbourhood character is going to go across the Shire. Before that work is completed, we can't make it an informed decision on how to argue the position for a reduction. As there were more than 350 objections made against the development of land north of Seawood Drive back in 2019, it's an astounding number of objections to a development. The declaration, the DEL planned by the State Minister for Planning has offered a reprieve from the development and an opportunity to stop it permanently. Our council submission aims to resolve issues on housing supply neighbourhood character across the Shire and this work will consider explicitly a reduction to the Cape Patterson northern boundary and highlights to the Minister the glaring inconsistencies in the background work supporting the DEL as well as the inconsistencies with regard to the way that these assessments um, deal with Cape Patterson. We have also highlighted the clear voice of the community advocating for a reduction. Um, I will continue to work alongside the community and council I think is very happy to work alongside the community to find a resolution for its concerns, which we do hear loud and clear. And the submission aims to ensure that the Dell is genuine in its intention to protect landscapes and the unique environment of the Bass Coast. And this is also reflected in, which I'll briefly touch on, Mr Mayor, um, Council's submission on extractive industries. So the community have also consistently argued against this activity in the Lang Lang to Grantville Woodland Corridor. And the draft Dell said that sand mining is a temporary activity that is, which is true, no, but it does, yes, Mr. Mayor, permanent damage to the environment and scars the landscape. Um, this submission is a considered strategic approach to planning for the Bass Coast Shire. Thank you, Councillor Lane. Councillor Holstead. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. There's been an expectation that the Dell would provide protection for the environment of Bass Coast, and to quote the policy, if its attributes are under threat of significant or irreversible land use change that would affect the environmental, social and economic value of the area, then I would ask the question how sand mining is not a significant threat causing irreversible land use change that would affect the environment, then I don't know what is. I find in the case of the extractive industry, the policy is a complete contradiction in its intent. Many saw this policy as a way to protect the last significant forest corridors in the Gippsland Plains and one of the last significant coastal forests in the Western Port region, but it seems the Western Port woodlands have been completely ignored by DELP. I respect the licensees have a right under state government legislation through their work authorities to continue their operations, but this was an opportunity for the Victorian government to make a change and put their money where their mouth is. Words don't describe the disappointment of the local community who have fought hard on this issue and should be encouraged to continue the fight. I congratulate Council for highlighting the minor agricultural activities that are proposed through the plan to require a permit, those such as fencing and removal of Australian height datum as a measure for where buildings can be sited. Requiring a bushfire assessment for buildings that are uninhabitable is an unnecessary impost on farmers. Given a significant portion of land in Bass Coast is used for agricultural purposes, it is concerning DELP has chosen to load farmers up with added red tape for no reason but to exert authority. It is essential that the Minister ensure the economic and social impacts of the policy are investigated. With firm township boundaries being set, how will this impact on the provision of housing by the state for the next 15 years? What impact will this policy have on affordable housing? How will infill development affect the very character of the towns we live in? There are a lot of unanswered questions and gaping big holes with this policy um, that it does not address. So I congratulate our officers on all the work that they've done and I believe the Submission Council's putting forward is 
um, a very good submission and I hope the Minister does uh, send it to an advisory committee. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Holstead. Any other councillor? Councillor Tassari. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Um, I, I won't go over again what Councillor Holstead and Councillor Wang have already stated, only to say that when this process started uh, a couple of years ago now, we had high hopes that um, we would be listened to, we would, we would be worked with, the community would be listened to. Um, unfortunately, as, as the process went along, it became pretty aware that uh, it wasn't going to happen. Uh, I sit here quite disappointed with the, uh, the draft that was put out for the, the very reasons that have already been highlighted. The submission that our officers have put forward, I congratulate them on the work that they have done. They've worked closely with us to, um, to make sure that um, what we hear from the community has been added to the submission. For us to um, put in here that we, we want to sit with the Minister and discuss our concerns, this submission for me is the best possible chance we've got to uh, stay in the game and to continue to have the discussions with the Minister and the Department. It's pretty clear so far that we haven't been heard um, and this submission is a determination to try and be heard. So I congratulate the officers on their submission. Thank you, Councillor Desari. Any other councillor wish to speak to the motion? Councillor King. Thank you, Mayor. <coughs> Excuse me. I agree with everything that I've been that I've heard today, and I congratulate the council officers too for what's been put together. But I also say to the community too that today we have to have a 50-year vision in front of us. But I also think that we, we I, I caution that we'd be very foolish to believe that visions don't change. And I only say this because I agree with the vision of today, but in 10 years, 20 years, 30 years, considering the coastline, populations, shortage of housing, uh, our mining industries and so forth, that visions do change. Um, I hope that they don't change, but I'd be very foolish myself to think that circumstances don't change either. So I just want the community to remember that, that things do change a little bit. We get more people, they love this area, they want to come and live here. Uh, they, they come down here and they look at what we've got and they go, geez, I'd love to have a bit of that. Um, but right now we've put this forward and I agree with it. But in the future, 10 years from now, it might change. I just, I'm open to that, that's all. Thank you, Councillor Ken, any other councillor? Councillor Rooks? Yeah, I um, just wanted to acknowledge how big a project it was and thank the staff for their um, support that they gave us councillors all the way through this process, but thank you. And uh, it was a DELP consultation that was meant to be happening and I think they lacked doing good community consultation. Um, and it's really important as councillors that we hear from the community, especially on something as important as this, uh, noting that I was pleased to initiate a, a process for the community and we to have greater input. And there was a range of community groups that were present um, for a presentation by DELP and we pulled out some key topics from that and uh, then had a further workshop to discuss some of those key topics. And we did a lot of learnings from each other. It was really good. Um, there was a, seven recommendations that came out of that, that process. And pleasingly, the alignment of the thinking from those uh, community groups and those recommendations is very similar to what's gone in the submission. So I have confidence that um, from the community point of view and from the council staff point of view that we have the right submission here. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Oaks. Councillor Bauer. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Mr Mayor, fellow councillors, members of the public, and in the gallery, it's right, the gallery and viewing online. I support, in principle, the aspirations of this submission, as everybody else has said. However, locking in the town boundaries would create what I call the Monaco principle. Monaco is only two square kilometres, and the only way they can go is up. As a result of the lack of land supply prices have become exorbitant. If we lock in the town boundaries, and if we, and at the rate of growth in this area continues, sooner rather than later, eventually we'll have to chop up the 2,000 metre blocks into 1,000 metre blocks, then 500 metres then 300 metres and remove the whole field of our area. Before we know it, West Coast will look like more the peninsula and we'll be petitioning both houses of parliament for extension of the town boundaries. But I do support this submission as it is. Thank you. 
Thank you, Councillor Bauer. Councillor Lang, do you wish to say anything further on this? Very briefly, Mr Mayor. Um, I think we shouldn't get bogged down with housing supply when we talk about the Dow, and I think that um, the submission uh, works to address that within the context of protecting the values and the distinctive area where we live. So it's important that, um, that these boundaries do get protected. Um, however, I think that this is an opportunity for the Minister to recognise that we do need to right what is perceived as some wrongs in the community from past over-expansions that have occurred for whatever reason. And, um, and that council is making a decision that is ultimately up to the minister. So I think um, one of the processes that we went through as a council was um, undertake a community submission process, which Councillor Rooks um, organised, which um, were 14 community groups were involved in across the Shire, and they were able to make their submissions, including the Cape Patterson Residents and Ratepayers Association. And that joint submission, um, 10 out of those 14 community groups supported a uh, reduction to the boundary in Cape Patterson. But not just to get bogged down with that Cape Patterson town boundary, um, although I'll, I will harp on about it as much as I possibly can, I do really think that it's important to understand that this isn't a silver bullet to housing supply in, in the Shire. I think that that needs to be addressed in a broader sense, a lot of different mechanisms. But it is a really, really progressive piece of legislation that it will allow um, the really, really important values we all love that our economy also loves in the Basco Shire. And I um, put this submission to... Um, Recommend, yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Councillor Lang. So those in favour of the motion, that's carried. Brings us to H7, which is a response to the petition to seal Bay Road and Fort Door Road, Jam Jarrett, and ask Mr Sturt to introduce the report, please. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Can we just have a second? I think a few of us want to go outside for a minute. Sorry to interrupt. But just leave. Just leave, okay, sorry. Uh, Mr Sturt. Thank you, Mr Mayor. The purpose of this report is to present the response to the petition received at the March 2022 Council meeting, requesting that Council consider sealing Bay Road and Fort Shore Road and Jam Jarrett. As part of the adopted urban roads and drainage policy, officers have consultation with the Jam Jarrett property owners to ascertain the willingness to contribute to a special charge scheme. In accordance with the policy, if 70% of all property owners are in favour of financially contributing to a special charge scheme, the Jam Jarrett may be reprioritised to deliver road and drainage works. Addressing this report will be subject to a future council meeting. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Mr. Sturton. Can I have a councillor, councillor Kent, a seconder, councillor Holstead? Councillor Ken. Here, I can't get that smile off your face. Um, look, I'll, I'll take this short and sweet. The, the community has stepped forward, put its hand up that they would like to get the road paved. It's now in their hands. It's great that uh, I'll say in some way to have handballed it back to them. It's their decision now. The paperwork will arrive. If they're in favour, they'll tick the box and let's move forward. It's, it's not our decision now, it's their decision. Thank you, Councillor Kent. Councillor Holstead. Further any further, Mr. any councillor wish to speak on the motion? Can I, if I can, Mr. Mayor, I can't ask, I can't help but ask for a point of clarification. Are we are we sealing Bay Road or are we uh, are we paving <laughs> Seal Bay Road? I think if uh, if the councillor had been listening, you would have heard that I put an A and a two in that uh, response to a petition to Seal Bay Road and Foreshore Road, Jam Jarrett. Thank you very much. <laughs> That's a, a is there any further staff, anyone wish to speak on the motion? If not, we'll put uh, Councillor Kent, do you wish to speak further? No. So we'll put that, uh, that motion. Those in favour? Uh, against carried. Sorry, Mr Mayor. <laughs> wasn't because it, that's how it was read out. 8.8 8 is the RSL Trust Terms of ref, Reference. I ask Mr Mullen to introduce the report, please. Thank you, Mr Mayor. The purpose is to call the Council ratify the Terms of Reference of the Mass Coast Development RSL Trust to allow funds to be utilised for intended purpose, which is to respond to homelessness and the prevention of suicide, and to nominate Council representatives to the Trust. Basco's Philip Island 
RSL Trust was established under Section 173 Agreement dated November 2019 between Basco Shire Council and the Phillip Island RSL Subrange Incorporated. The Phillip Island RSL agreed to contribute a minimum of $12,500 in debt to annual consumer price index increases to the trust on the 1st of July each year from 2014 to July 2022. This is currently $110,000 available to contribute to community projects on Phillip Island. However, the terms of reference must be ratified in order to release the funds. This report also nominates council representatives on the trust. Thank you, Mr. Mullen. Thank you, Mr. Mullen. Now we'll put the motion up on the screen because there are some additions to it from the published motion in the agenda that includes the names of the officers and councillors we're recommending. There's no pressure. No. Right. The wrong thing's just going out to the world. The computer's just having a little moment. There we go. Okay, that we have the uh, motion. Uh, displayed on the board. Can I have a councillor to move and a councillor to second? Councillor Tassari, Councillor Rooks. Go ahead, Councillor Tassari. I'm happy just to uh, put this forward. Uh, councillor Bauer and Councillor Holstead will do both do a fantastic job, as will the uh, coordinator of recreation. So happy to uh, recommend. Excellent. Uh, councillor Rooks, yeah, nothing to say any further. The councillor wish to speak on the motion? Just to say thank you for your vote of confidence. So if, if no further discussion, those in favour? That's carried. Uh, brings us to H9 Community Group Needs in Cows. And Mr Mullen, to introduce the report, please. Thank you, Mr Mayor. The purpose of this report is to seek council endorsement to create greater community access and utilisation of blue gum reserve. And the council will see the main building on the settlement road to cows. Officers work with Pickle to identify a blue gum reserve as a potential location for a new community garden due to its proximity to the Cows Township and the utilisation by a number of other community groups, which would create synergies and generate community collaboration at the site. Officers undertook consultation with the local community, supported the inclusion of the community garden at Blue Gum Reserve. Officers also worked with the various community groups to ensure their needs could be met by the council owners who may be located on South yes. The report proposes to allocate funding for council to resort to the recreation reserve farm and amend the blue gum reserve master plan to incorporate a community garden. It also recommends that the version works to perform a set by building to be referred to consideration in the 2022-23 budget support the following community groups. Artist Society at Philip Island, Philip Island Arts and Craft Gallery, Philip Island Contemporary Exhibition Space, and Green Thank you, Mr. Thank you, Mr. Mullen. Have a council to move and a council to second the report. Councillor Rooks, Councillor Bauer. Councillor Rooks. Thank you, Mayor Whirling. Yeah, this is a fantastic outcome to create this community hub um, down at the old CFA building and Blue Gum Reserve. It came about through changes. Uh, I guess the first one was the Cows Cultural Centre in getting that um, pulled down so we could put our new one up. Um, it, moved, it moved three groups, the Phillip Island Art and Craft Gallery um, and Aspie and Pisces. So there's three artist groups that were using that space and couldn't anymore. So they needed a home. Uh, furthermore, boomerang bags that um, had been basing themselves out of the pickle site and with pickle moving as well uh, to their new site soon. They also had to move on. There will be no room in their new site. Uh, and finally, uh, the community garden that's been put forward at Blue Gum Reserve. It's a um, very popular decision, I believe. Um, consultation was um, put out and there was 36 people that got back to the council officers and all of them said, yes, we would like a community garden there. So it's a really good outcome that these groups um, create this little community hub down there. And I'm um, looking forward to going down and visiting them. Thank you, Councillor Rooks. Councillor Bauer. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, I think this is what Councillor Rooks just said. It's a really good outcome. Uh, it it uh, uh, 
manages to resolve issues with the groups that have been uh, left out because of the cultural central cultural centre redevelopment and the new pickle home at Worley Avenue. I again uh, reiterate what Councillor Rook said, and the officers did a fantastic job negotiating this minefield. Uh, again, I'll just say that the community gardens, exactly as Councillor Rook said, it's a, a very popular decision. So, in many ways, I'm mir uh, mirroring what he says, but I, I think it's a really good outcome, and I fully recommend this. Thank, Thank you, you. Councillor Bauer. Any other councillor wish to speak to this, Councillor Holstead? Mr Mayor, I remember when I was first elected to Bass Coast, Councillor Rooks and I met with these particular groups who were at the time quite distressed about not having a home. So I'm really pleased um, that we've come to this decision and found somewhere for them to live. But as Chair of the Bass Coast Arts and Community Advisory Committee, I couldn't be more excited um, for the four groups mentioned in this report and then for them to finally have that home they can call their own. They all do incredible work offering time out for residents. This new space will be a place to focus on being creative in a safe and friendly space. We're also fortunate to have such talented artists who deserve our support and providing this space as a way we can encourage their continued work in Bass Coast. It has been a long and anxious wait and I thank all the members of the group for their patience while Council work to find the right location for them. I know there has been some concern with regard to the moving dates with Pickle and the need for Bass Coast Health to move into the current site of this community house. However, I hope the management of Pickle does not lose sight that they are a community house who should be adequately funded by the Victorian Government and that given the enormously positive impact their work has had on our community, the ratepayers of Bass Coast have, through Council, significantly supported their efforts. Council has continued to step up when the state has gone missing in action, most recently with the building of a $1.7 million new facility that will now be followed up with the provision of land for a whole of community garden. Um, the contribution by the state in this whole project was 100,000 Ks or $100,000 um, to help Pickle with their move, and that's it. So I think Council has well and truly supported the group. Um, we're happy to do so. They do amazing work within the community. Uh, but again, um, they are a neighbourhood house and they should be funded by the state government. Thank you, you Councillor Holstead. Any other councillor wish to speak to this motion? If not, Councillor Rooks? Uh, I'll just say that... It's interesting going back to when I first became a councillor too, and I wasn't aware so much of how important the arts are. I've got a sporting background myself. I've been made aware of how important the arts are in our community. So um, anything that we do to support the arts, I'm really pleased to uh, support now. So I'm very, very happy with this. Outcome. Thank you, Councillor Rooks. Those in favour? That's carried. Uh, which brings us to H10 draft local law. And I ask Mr Mullen to introduce the report, please. Thank you, Mr Mayor. The purpose of this report is to present the draft Basco Shop Council of Water for Water for One, Amenity 2022. The Council considers the endorsement to commence community consultation of the draft option. Council's Water for Water covers a wide range of issues, including, but not limited to, animal management, use of council land, best in place, and exists to secure, uh, secure community safety. Protection of public assets and enhance neighbourhood community in a way that is transparent and adheres to the principles of governance and best practice. Council officers have reviewed the current local law and identified opportunities to simplify, strengthen, and expand the new local law so that it continues to meet the needs of the community. It is recommended that Council endorse the draft. That's Coast Shire Council Local One Neighbourhood Amenity 2022. I'll take it available for public comment until the 2nd of June 2022. Thank you, Mr. Mullen. Before uh, I call for a Councillor Kent is prepared to remove that or a seconder, Councillor Rawls. Councillor Kent. Thank you, Mayor. I thought I had to get in quickly. Very there. Eager. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Like the uh, one of the main things I want to get across to the community is that this is a draft local law, and it's released to the community.
for their comments. Please, and I'm talking to the community, make your comments. Don't come back to me later saying this is unfair. This is your opportunity to put your comments in there and tell the council what you want, what you think is fair, what you think is unfair. I, I have a, uh, a special interest in the short stay rental accommodation. Some landlords do it good. Some are atrocious and ruin our community, absolutely ruin it. As a community member, this is your chance to speak up for what you think is a fair community law in regards to short stay rental accommodation. It's also an opportunity for those owners of those accommodation places, and I speak to those who do it well, to speak up for themselves too, and actually tell us what they're doing well and how it works and what they are doing that keeps them out of the eye of the community. But please, we have to address this every 10 years or so. We're doing it now. It's going to be with us for a long time. Get in there and make your comments, please. Thank you, yeah. Councillor Ken. Councillor Ross. Thanks, Mayor Whitlam. Um, thanks for the community so far for their input into this uh, draft document. And it has been cleaned up a lot by council officers, so well done on that area. I also wanted to talk about the short-term accommodation and um, living on Phillip Island, we have that issue that comes up a lot, especially with the noise and the waste. Um, I wanted to uh, mention that with regards to the waste, there is something more that I, I believe is going to go into the, um, the draft now. I uh, haven't spoken to Ms Kennedy yesterday and that's with regards to trying to get uh, kitchen bins to align to the external bins. I've been banging on this for about a year now in council. And it's really important that those short-term stay accommodations don't just have one bin, but they have three bins so people can sort their waste straight away and that then aligns to their bins outside. So I believe that's going to be um, possibly added to this draft uh, and I'll be interested in the community's feedback, of course, on that. Thank you, Councillor Rook. Any other council wish to speak to this? Yeah, Councillor Bauer. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Uh, just following on from what Councillor Rook said about the three bins and I uh, was visiting a friend who had a combination, one of our more prominent uh, uh, places here. The, the bins in the kitchen was no green bin, a white bin for recycling and a blue bin for, for, for the uh, hard rubbish waste. So I fully echo what Councillor Rook said there. That's, if we don't get that right, we'll get nothing right. Uh, I, I really want to congratulate the council officers for incorporate the way they've done, not just the short-term accommodation, but other sections of the local law. I'm glad that what Councillor Lang and I worked on, on the short-term accommodation, nearly all of it has been incorporated into the short-term accommodation. And uh, I'm looking forward for this document to come forward in its final form so that we can move forward. And as we've all noticed here, that the short-term accommodation problem will start to be resolved and hopefully eventually be resolved. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Bauer. Any other councillor wish to speak to? Mr Mayor, just quickly, I, I um, confer with everything councillors have said, but I wanted to highlight um, the section 32, which is about the bees, which is uh, something very small and Councillor Kent, I know, has his own a uh, little hive there, but it has been uh, an issue that's been raised with me previously and council's not been able to address it. So the fact that there is something in there about bees is uh, is a good thing. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Holstead. Any other councillor wish to speak? If not, uh, Councillor Kent, you wish to say anything further in response? Thank you, uh, Mayor. I can only say that if you own beehives, you've got to look after them because they sit after me. But um, I, I look forward to the comments from the community and just to see what to them. Thank you, Councillor. Right. Thank you, Councillor Kent. Those in favour? That's carried. Brings us to H11, which uh, Community Grants 2022 Round 11 funding recommendation. We have a little announcement to make here that due to council involvement in local community organisations, four councils have declared a conflict of interest in 
item H11. This creates a situation where council does not have a quorum to consider the matter. To prevent a delay in getting grants into the community, therefore, it has been agreed this item will be withdrawn and the grants awarded by the CEO. The total budget for the community grants program was adopted by council as part of the 21-22 budget and the total funding recommendations are well within the CEO's financial delegations. That, so there is essentially a head of approval there for, for that activity. So that brings us to H12, Seneca Estate proposed road discontinuance. And I call on Mr. Mack to introduce the report, please. Thank you, Mr. Mack. The purpose of this report is to finalise the process to consolidate land parcels within the Seneca Estate for ease of management in the future. Council has advertised the proposed road discontinuance as required under the Local Government Act, and no submissions were received in response. Council can now conclude the statutory process and it is recommended that Council approve the discontinuance of roads within the city state. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mack. Can I have a Councillor to move and second the, the motion? The Councillor Rooks. Councillor Kent. Thank you. Councillor Rooks. Yeah, this is just another step in the process of turning scenic estate into what it is now, which is a beautiful little bit of reserve um, where we see plenty of people. I always see cars parked there uh, when I drive past and they've done some great reveg work. The birds have arrived and the walking tracks are busy. So we don't need the roads there anymore. The community seems to agree with that and with the no submissions. And uh, I just want to continually thank friends of Scenic Estate for their ongoing work. Councillor Rooks, Councillor Kent, nothing to say. Any other council wish to speak to the motion? If not, uh, Councillor Rooks, you need to say anything further in response to your comments. Okay, those in favour? Uh, that's carried. Which brings us to H13, instrument of appointment and authorisation. And Mr. Mack, let's start again. Mr. Mack, to introduce the report, please. Thank you, Mr. Mack. The purpose of this report is to recommend that Council appoint the main officer as an authorised officer under the Environment Protection Act 2017. This will enable efficient and effective service delivery. Thank you, Mr. Mack. Thank you, Mr. Mack. Can I have a Councillor move and second the motion? Councillor Kent. And Councillor Tassari. Councillor Ken. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Uh, this is purely operational. The council officer has to have the power to carry out their job. Don't really need to say anything about it. Councillor Tassari. <laughs> further to say, any other councillor wish to make any comment? If not, we put the report. Councillor Ken, those in favour? Against, carry. Mayor. That brings us H14, award of tender 22003, construction of cricket practice enclosure, Thompson Reserve envelope. Mr. Mack, to introduce the report, please. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Following a public tender process for the construction of a cricket practice enclosure in Thompson Reserve envelope, it is recommended that the trustee for Devonish Family and Trust, Hyde Roller PTY LTD, be awarded tender number 22003. The tender from Hydwella has been assessed as providing the best overall value for this project and they have demonstrated that they have the necessary capacity, capability and experience to provide the required services. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mack. Can I have a councillor move? Councillor Tassari and a seconder. Councillor Lane. Councillor Tassari. Thank you, Mayor Whelan. Well, this one, uh, the council have uh, come off the long run and uh, the best foot forward have played a dead bat with this all along. They've been fantastic on the front foot. And uh, it's good to see that the tender's finally been uh, re acknowledged uh, and we can move on with uh, building this fantastic facility in the beautiful township of Inverloch. Thank you, Councillor Cesari. Councillor Lang. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Um, I was going to say this is a slam dunk, but it's not quite the right... <laughs> But this is a great project, be that as it may. Um, it will increase safety by getting the existing nets off the ground and establishing them safely separately. Uh, there's four retractable nets, which means the space can be used and as an enclosed wider area supporting other sporting clubs, including the Inverloch Stars, um, arguably Wanthaggy Wolves' biggest enemy. And this new state-of-the-art practice facility is incredibly flexible um, and that will allow for all sorts of activity, including soccer and cricket. And it's terrific that we are thinking ahead, investing in an amazing asset that will have 
the flexibility and meet our future needs. Um, council has fed this one straight past the keeper. <laughs> boom, boom. Dear me. Yep. Uh, any other councillor wish to speak to this motion? Oh, Mr Mayor, just to let uh, Councillor Lang know that slam dunks usually reserved for basketball, not cricket. <laughs> Yes, it's unfortunately a bit cliche ridden, isn't it? Any other councillor wish to speak to the motion? If not, Councillor Sorry, I hope we can go straight to a vote. <laughs> <laughs> I had my best one saved up, Mr Mayor, as well, but let's put it straight to a vote. OK. Those <laughs> in favour? Against, that's carried. That brings us to statutory reports. And could I have a councillor move and second that gender items 1.1, 1 1.2, 1 1.3 and 1 1.4 be considered as a block. Councillor Bauer, Councillor Tassari, those in favour? Against? Carried. Um, so those, those are the informal medium council records, planning and building statistics, March 2022, contracts awarded and councillor expenses of the council term, 9th of November 2021 to 31st of March 2022. Uh, does any councillor wish to raise anything in particular in respect to any of those reports? If not, can I have a re resolution that the recommendation attached to agenda items 1.1, 1.2, 1.3 and 1.4 be adopted. Councillor Tassari seconded. Councillor Bauer. Those in favour? Against, that's carried. And that brings us to urgent business. I've had no notice of urgent business. And so then that brings us to the announcement of the next council meeting. The next council meeting will be held on the 15th of June 2022 in the Bass Coast Civic Centre Council Chamber, Bayview Street East, Wonthaggy, commencing at 1pm. Uh, now we have a motion here, I'll seek a mover and second, that the meeting be closed to members of the public pursuant to section 66 of the Local Government Act 2020. Consider an item as, as they deal with confidential information as defined in section 3 brackets F of the Act. Councillor to move, Councillor to sorry, Councillor Bauer. Those in favour? That's carried. Thank you for watching the live stream of Council's meeting and for joining us in the Chamber. The meeting will now be closed to the public and will end the live stream. The meeting's adjourned.